Hey folks, so the new version of Autogen Studio just got released, uh, version 0.4.2, and there are a bunch of interesting things mostly related to developer experience. For example, you can now modify the gallery items independently, uh, both using the UI, and for each of these components, you can switch and directly modify the JSON specification underneath. And each of these uh, gallery items are all serialized to a database, and so it means they persist across sessions. Um, there's also improvements to observability, so you can see all of the LLM calls made by um, any part of the AI agent. You can stream tokens as they're generated by the model. Um, there's support for new model providers like Anthropic. Um, components are now automatically validated on save. And so for example, simple mistakes like um, an incorrect um, provider name or the use of a library that uh, cannot be imported correctly is sort of cut immediately. Um, there's also improvements to the um, playground uh, user experience. So for example, you can compare sessions side by side. Very, very useful for making sense of configuration differences. Um, there's also an experimental feature where you can allow multiple users to log in um, to use Autogen Studio. And so for example, you could enable GitHub authentication and um, before any user has access, they can log in. And so you can use this sort of separate user sessions. Um, lots of improvements. Let's sort of take a look. Before we get into all the features of the new updates, um, I'd say if you are new to Autogen Studio, I'd recommend you sort of look at the previous tutorial or release uh, video walkthrough I made. Um, and that will give you a strong background for all the material that will be covered here. So the first thing we want to look at in the new changes is updates to the gallery. And so previously, one of the biggest challenges was that to modify the gallery, um, you had to sort of modify the underlying JSON. But with these improvements, you know, there are dedicated tabs for teams, agents, tools, models, termination conditions. And so for example, um, there are four default uh, teams that come on the, with the default gallery that ships to Autogen Studio and you could select any one of them. So for example, you could click on edit and you have this uh, UI here that lets you sort of modify some of the um, of the parameters or some of the uh, configurations for this team. Um, in addition to that, you could switch to JSON where you could um, optionally sort of modify just the JSON content for this specific team. Um, another interesting thing is that there are these little uh, tabs up top here. So for example, you could make a copy of a round robin team as opposed to creating one from scratch and that all uh, gets added to your list of teams and you can delete them and, and vice versa. Um, and then the other important thing is that previously all of these was on local storage. So uh, previously if you switched browsers, you lost all the work you did here. Um, now all of this is serialized to the Origin Studio database. And so for example, if you have this hosted on a separate machine um, across you know, interaction sessions, across browsers, all of this gets persisted. Okay, same thing for agents, same thing for tools. I think there's been some updates to the UI for tools, um, nothing really large. So for example, let's look at the fetch web page tool here. Um, I think now you can have, there's a moniker editor where you can edit some of the source code directly if you wanted. Um, you could modify things like remove global imports, add them, all that stuff. And again, you can always look at the, the JSON representation of this tool. Um, and then the third interesting thing has to do with models. And so one of the um, questions that we get very, very often here is how do we use um, Olama models? How do we use Azure OpenAI models? How do we use um, Anthropic models? And um, this is really where you want to start in terms of configuring models. And so by default, there are, for example, model clients that come with the new version of Autogen Studio. The first is the OpenAI GPT-4 model. Um, Nothing new here, all of the parameters that you would expect. And so if we switch to JSON, it's a really simple configuration. There's a provider here, um, there's a component type, and then for configuration, we just have the model name. And what this means is that um, if you use this model, um, you can see there's no API key specified here. The recommendation is that you have an open AI API key environment variable set. And that's essentially how you get um, this model to work in your environment. Um, another interesting thing that has been added here is that um, 
there's now a test button for model components. And so that way, let's say you came up with a, you, you, let's say you, you wanted to use an open AI model. You made a copy of this model. It shows up here and you made some changes here. Let's say you changed it to open uh, GPT-4 or mini and you have an additional O there. Um, you could come here and click test model and immediately you see this error message that says test field and you can sort of look at it and see here it says it's failed to instantiate model component model info is required when the model name is not a valid open AI model and so here we, the reason why we have that is because we have um gpt4 or mini or there's no model like that from open AI. and if we remove that and we click test um we, we get like a um, model tests comp completely successfully and underneath what happens is that we just run a simple query what is 2 plus 2 um, and we get the model to sort of return the answer and the model responded with 4 here okay so how do we use a local model let's say we have an Olama model or an LM studio model the way to start would be to make a copy of the sample Mistral 7b model here and the key point is that um, any local model that supports an open AI compliant endpoint, so that's kind of important. Uh, you need to support an open AI, the, the provider needs to support an open AI compliant model, which LM Studio and Olama does. Um, we can make a copy of this Mistral model. And so let's say we were going to <clears throat> use, let's say 5.4 mini, 5.4 mini. I don't have that set up, but um, this is exactly how that would work. Um, the important thing is that we can look at the JSON here for any model that um, is not an actual open AI model. The way we configure and support that in Autogen is that we add a couple of fields. So for example, we change the base URL. If you are using um, LM Studio, this is what the default URL looks like. If you're using Olama, it's slightly different. Remember to add a V1 there. The other important thing is that we have to add in uh, things like model info. So we need to tell Autogen if the model supports vision capabilities, if it supports function calling, JSON output, if in this case, the model family is unknown. So we leave that as unknown. And then we need to tell if the model supports function calling uh, structured output. And so this is what your configuration, model info configuration should look like for any local model. And this is just a label and this should be the model name that's provided by us as it's registered on LM Studio or Olama. And once you're done with all of these, you can go ahead and test. In this case, I don't have like a model setup and so we will get something that looks like this connection error and ideally you should sort of tinker around here um, modify your configuration until you have um, um, until you actually can test the model and get get a, a correct result um, so this is one improvement we have to the model uh, model uh, interface so the next feature updates with Autogen Studio is um, observability. And so here we, uh, under the settings tab, you click the cog here. You can come over here to UI settings and enable or toggle the show LLM event um, toggle. And so for example, we click save. And what that just means is that let's say we start a new session, um, creating a new session and we sort of run a query. Um, as this query runs, in addition to the messages that are responded or returned by the agent, we also get this LLM call events that show up in the UI. And essentially, it's essentially just uh, an event logging system that shows whenever a call is made to an, a model client, all that just gets logged and then shown here. And so we see the exact raw message input that goes into the LLM and we see the response and all a bunch of user statistics here. And this should work for all, um, all models uh, supported. Um, the next important feature has to do with uh, token streaming. And so previously, we only saw all of the messages that came from um, the agent once the entire message was generated. But we can head over to uh, a team builder and for our team, we can sort of modify a specific agent and we can scroll down and sort of update this to stream model client and we can hit save. And as usual, we can test this model, this updated configuration right here. So for example, we will say something like uh, write uh, full paragraph 
essay on the accomplishments of Albert Einstein. And right now we can see that as opposed to the um, agent just returning the entire message once it's done, we can see that all of the chunks of responses provided by the LLM sort of stream to the UI as they become available and just, just a slightly better developer experience. Um, as you mean, that is important to your development workflow. The next feature that um, update that's worth mentioning here it has to do with validation. And so here you probably can see this little green icon that says valid team validation successful. And so sometimes when folks switch to the JSON view, in some cases, um, there might be a few things that are configured incorrectly. And so for example, um, we might put in an incorrect uh, model provider. So you might see just wrong provider or something incorrect like this. And we'll see that once we save this, um, because all of this is a Pydantic model underneath, we can validate that to sort of verify that the data there is correct. And so for example, once we save that, we get like validation issues, um, says that uh, Teams does not have an attribute called wrong provider and schema validation has failed here. And so just everything that can be validated using an automatic validation is done for you uh, once a model uh, is saved. We can um, undo this, we can save it, and the validation error goes away. The next thing that I think is really important is the ability to compare sessions. And so right now we have, um, let's, let's go ahead and from the gallery, um, let's create a web agent team and a deep research team. And the web agent team and the deep research team, they're fairly different. And so for web agents, we have a multimodal web server and assistant agent and user proxy agent. And they all have uh, different system messages. Um, on the deep research team, we have a research agent, we have a verifier, we have a summary agent. We don't have a user proxy agent here. And they all behave differently. And we might even go ahead and sort of switch out add different models, just create completely different configurations. And one thing that's actually useful is to be able to, let's say, create multiple sessions. So we might create a deep research session and we might create a web agent session. We can modify the names here. So web agent, save this. And we might just call this deep research, deep research. And we might save that. And essentially, we might then hit the compare button over here. Um, and now we have um, a web agent on the left and deep research agent on the right. And then we might say something like, show me, show me the, we might just say who, who is Victor DBA and what papers has he written, right? A short report um, and we can essentially start off here and start off in the second session and right off the bat we can see that um, the deep research agent you know work is getting done um, some functions have been called the research agent sort of calling functions um, we can see the token usage here here we have 16,000 tokens here we have 76,000 tokens 117,000 tokens the reason is that the web agent uses a web browser, um, web web drive in a web browser just takes up a lot more tokens compared to, um, um, which, because we, we process both image and text compared to, let's say, um, the deep research agent here that's mostly just configured to use um, a search engine API and uh, process a bunch of text. We can see that the flow of information is sort of different here. So we see the flow of information here goes from a user to the web server assistant and it says it's complete. And we can look at the report that it came up with here. Uh, Victor Divi is a research scientist, all of that. And it has like a few of my papers. This sounds pretty okay. Um, now these are the, and the reason it start it completed is because an agent said terminate. Okay. that makes sense here. The same thing terminates, but it took significantly more time. And while this took, while this was longer, it took 79,000 tokens and this took 193,000 tokens. Again, just an illustration of how much tokens get used up by, um, uh, 
text and vision modalities. And let's look at uh, some of the results here. Okay, this looks good. Um, it even has a table here. I think mostly some of the some of the structure here, there's a better structure here. It just has to do with um, how the agents are designed. Um, they're not exactly one for one, but it's valuable to be able to compare them uh, side by side. Um, and then finally, the last um, piece I want to talk about is authentication. So here we see that like we have Victor DBA uh, signed in here because this specific instance of um, Origin Studio that I have here um, is configured with um, authentication enabled. And so this is an experimental feature and there's a documentation uh, for it. The place to look at is to go to the Origin Studio uh, GitHub documentation page. And you can click on experimental features. And the core idea is that um, you can pass in an auth config uh, when running uh, Origin Studio. And the thing you wanna do is first of all, uh, create an authentication.yaml file. In this case, uh, currently only we only support GitHub authentication. So you can put in a JWT uh, secret uh, token expires, and then you can create a GitHub application on GitHub, uh, get a client ID, client secret and specify callback URL. And once you have all of that done, you can then initiate Origin Studio and pass in a path to the authentication authentication yaml and once that is done as you mean have everything configured um, every user of uh, other gen studio will have to sort of authenticate before uh, they use um, they can use the app now what do you get out of this um, this not does not immediately provide security it just provides authentication and it just says that like um, everyone who sort of signs in using this github auth flow um, they you know they're actually they actually have access to that github uh github whatever github uh, account that they have used and essentially what happens is that um we sort of only show data from the database that um has been authored by that user so for example only the sessions that are created by the user show up here um and only the teams and the settings for that user show up in that instance now other things like having access to process code execution, all of that is still shared across users of that installation and more work needs to be done to sort of isolate that. And that's why this feature is uh, experimental. Okay, so that was a quick overview of all of the features and the new release for Origin Studio. Um, we covered a lot of stuff. Um, we covered some of the component validation and testing capabilities. Um, we covered improvements to the gallery, um, the ability to sort of modify each um, gallery item in the UI and not just from JSON. Um, we also covered like support for new types of models, uh, for example, the Anthropic model client and the ability to test the model client directly um, from the UI. We covered uh, improvements in observability. And so you, we now log every LLM call and we can show that um, in the UI. Um, we demonstrated the new capabilities with token streaming. Um, we demonstrated uh, the ability to compare sessions uh, side by side. And then experimental features um, around enabling authentication um, in Autogen Studio. Um, so I hope you find all of these useful in um, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.